Well, good morning, Yulia. Good morning. I am so excited to have you on our podcast, The Mindset Champion. And I, I could not be happier to have you share your, your story and um, get to know you a little bit better and let others that will listen get to know you better and how you can help them in their real estate lives through your thinking and experiences in life too. And uh, so I practiced this, I practice it. It's Yulia Hazanoff. Whew, I think I got the last oh, name. Yeah. Right. Yes, you got it right. Two <laughs> points for that. <laughs> okay, we're off to a good start. And yes. from Keller Williams, what a great, great uh, uh, company that is. Produced so, so many good um, agents and people that really love people. And yeah. we can see that about you too. So we're going to learn a little bit more. Can you tell us a little bit about what led you into real estate and how long have you been uh, working in real estate? Yeah, certainly. So um, I have an interesting journey uh, because it's kind of like one thing led to another. So, I mean, I lived for the longest in Southern California and I've been always working with customer service. So it's always was like managing, you know, clothing store or, or some kind of like businesses, you know, uh, and all. being like director of operations it's always people and we're, it's like a lot of different cosmetics you know and uh, oops we're kind of losing the connection here i think we had two major locations in beverly hills and Hollywood. we have a in over yet what is the the connection okay yeah we had a little connection problem so let's see here getting it then yeah, we missed we missed uh, some of the the opening there. So what I can I can cut this uh, back, but um, so maybe um, if you want to start from the the interesting journey part, I've had an interesting journey and okay. and go on yes. from there. Okay, <laughs> okay. So yeah, it's actually a pretty interesting journey. It's kind of like one thing led to another, and it's happened pretty organically for me, which is great because it feels like that's was step in my life that's what was meant to be so after you know working in the customer service industry for many many years actually in all aspects of it including like managing like a business or like a clothing store uh which was great uh and then i worked in the beauty industry for quite a bit like with cosmetics makeup skincare i had all these different brands where i used to work with um and I had a lot of clients coming in from it. So it was great and fun because I truly loved that. But that was still when the beauty industry was still very hot, you know, with the cosmetics and all the products when people used to come to the store, you know, before Amazon took over, you know. Oh, yeah. And then eventually <laughs> when Amazon was pretty big, you know, people are like, you know, that lazy and kind of right. stuff coming to the stores, you know. And I mean, I can say I'm like one of these people guilty of such, you know. Sure. Um, so that's when things kind of like started going like downhill in the beauty industry, you know. So, but I love the aspect of helping people, you know, and the gratitude you get from it and them coming back for me, you know. So, uh, and I always knew that I loved homes. So I used to go um, sometimes with my, a few investor clients and they've been always looking at like some properties that looked kind of disheveled and, you know, like something that needed work. So I'm right. like, this is interesting that instead of buying beautiful homes, these people are looking for like ugly homes, you know? Yeah. And I was thinking like, it's kind of fascinating, you know, it's like a reverse psychology. So I was trying to get more into it. And then I realized it's a huge market for it, you know? Absolutely. And I'm like, wow, this is, yeah, this is like genius because I mean, it's like if they're improving our, um, you know, infrastructure and, you know, uh, eliminating the ugly ones to the pretty ones so I'm like okay I'm loving it you know and then I got my uh, real estate license uh, officially in 2018 and okay. I was working since then I was working yeah with like investors um, and I was pretty good with like finding those you know places you know communicating with people you know and then for like you know deciding like taking it like very seriously I moved to the Bay Area from LA from the Southern California, 
moved to the Bay Area. I wanted to see what the market is like out there, you know. We always hear about like Silicon Valley and all these yeah. people, you know. So you think, oh my God, it's going to be like a crazy hot market. You know, people have the funds, you know. Uh, so that's what I decided to do, uh, which was a great experience for me because, I mean, you would think that it's all one state, California. I mean, it's pretty big, right? Right. But it's like com- two different markets, you know, it's almost like two different states like literally yeah, and in california out. yeah in northern california it's so different like the people the culture the weather um you know the way they like have the rules going on you know so i'm like wow, wow this is like uh, eye-opening you know and yeah and that's how i started i mean i was doing like a lot of door knocking you know because obviously i didn't know many people out there yeah. One of the best um, ways, yeah, get out there, knock it's on one doors. Of the best ways, yeah. And then I would like pick one that I would pick like a certain city. I'm like, okay, today I'm going to explore more about the city and at the same time get to know the people, you know. So that's like you kill two birds at once, you know. I would drive around downtown and all like the exciting places around and then meet the neighbors. So yeah. that's how I got uh, a few of my uh, early listings, you know. Uh, and it felt really interesting, you know, it feels great. And uh, yeah, everything got from there. But That's you know, it feels, yeah, yeah. But I want to say that it's really important also who you work, with, you know, oh, um, yeah. especially as a beginner, you know, someone that needs to get the experience. Yeah, knowledge. tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, yeah, definitely. So um, Keller Williams uh, was excellent company. And it's just a great company for like beginners. If you're getting into real estate, I mean, you need to get all the information, the knowledge you can get, you know? Right. And not every company provides that. They have a great some training program. Great training, you know, but some companies do, but it's a very on the surface level, you know? It's like, it's not into the depth of it, you know? Like not mm-hmm. so comprehensive. So that's why Keller Williams won for me in that aspect, you know? Um, I first joined a couple of, before I even joined them, you know, the great aspect, you can like shop around and look around. And I mean, it was mind blowing, you know, the courses, the classes, uh, the people, you know, the culture, um, it's gr- like, I would go to like to top agents over there and speak with them. And, and they were like, so open, you know, yeah, like, sharing, really sharing, you know, and I really appreciated that, you know. Oh, that's amazing. I, I work with probably half of the work, the realtor partners that I work with are KW agents. Mm-hmm. And um, I've been into their offices. I've seen their training programs. A good friend of mine, Kim, uh, she's actually one of their trainers for one of the largest offices down here, KW and Irvine. And it's just uh, amazing to see how hard they work at, at producing good knowledge, good programs. But you know what? Um, you started real estate just before a pandemic and then yes. pandemic hits and the market changed and, and, you know, some weird things hit us. What pivots or what adjustments have you had to make during these challenging times to, to be successful? Yeah, great question. Uh, it is, was an interesting time for me because I was able to get it going really fast got a few deals going and then we had the pandemic, you know, everything mm-hmm. changed. But during the pandemic, you know, where I was at the time, it was so hot. So it was a crazy hot market. Yeah. I ended up switching from working with sellers to working with buyers. Because mm. you know? the interest rates got me so low, remember? Right. It was like as low as like two and a half. One of my clients got it like a two and a half percent. Oh yeah. You know, which is historically low, you know. Right. And, uh, and it was crazy. It was like buyers. Like I remember like going to showing once one couple an open house and I had other people like approaching me wanting to see the same house and they would like pouring in, you know, and then like looking for a presentation, you know, can you work with us? You know, we want to submit an offer. So it was like a crazy house, but it was <laughs> wonderful, you know? Yeah. It was like the pandemic actually was one of the best times. I agree. But- <laughs> yeah and uh we would go and but the challenging part of course was because of the multi-offer situation so we've had to submit like the 
you know, an offer within like 30 other offers, you know, and that one of the things also where you develop skills, like how can you stand out from the crowd, you know, as an agent, you know, doing the fiduciary duty to your client, you want them, I mean, they want to get the house, you want them to get it, like, how can you stand and have your offer accepted rather than somebody else's, you know? Yes. And I was like, you know, thinking about ways, discussing with other people, uh, looking here and there. And, you know, we've got lucky, you know, with a few properties, you know, it's just, it's really all about communication. You know, you really have to communicate with the listing agent from the beginning until the end, you know, and be transparent, you know, build like a, a relationship, you know. It was great. And then with your clients as well and push them, you know, how bad do you want this property? How bad, you know? And then they're like, yeah, we want it really bad. Okay. Now you need to then come up with some more, you know? Yeah. And that's how you motivate them. Well, that's, that's really good. And, you know, unfortunately and sadly, um, a lot of real estate agents left the business when it got tough. A lot yeah. of lenders left the business when it got tough, but you know what? We're still here. We're still yeah. grinding every single day, helping clients. And during a slow market, what are we doing? We're out there knocking on doors. Mm -hmm. We're out there marketing, increasing our marketing right now. We're hiring yeah. people to get them ready because we know the boom is coming. Rates are starting. There will be decreases this year. Mm -hmm. And we're going to be ready for that. We are ready for that. So I love hearing what your what adjustments you've made because that's why you're here. You're still here while unfortunately our colleagues are not. Yeah. And when this boom hits again and we're already starting to see it, my busy realtors are really busy right now and we're ready. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm excited for you. I think that's it leads me into um really the whole theme of this podcast is you know the mindset of a champion. Um, you've made adjustments so that you're you're here and you're successful. But to you, Julia, what does having the mind of a champion really mean to you? And how does that how can that lead to success, that mindset of a champion? You know, I would think that it's all the little things that you do that mm. lead to the big thing. You know, because you cannot like achieve all of a sudden those big sales, you know, um, and have people like, you know, calling you. I want you to represent me. It's all these little activities that you've been doing in the past, you know, that will eventually lead to that. So the mindset is basically believing in yourself, mm -hmm. believing that you can do it, you know, and do those activities every day, you know. Like, I mean, of course, we all have some days where we feel a little like demotivated, you know, or alert down, right. but, but just make sure that you do at least something, you know, some of these things, you know, you feel like not doing any calls today. Well, instead of like doing 50 calls, just do maybe like 10 calls, you know, Yeah. follow up with those people that you know already, you know, um, go out there, maybe network, you know, meet a couple of people, you know. Tell them you're in the business. Give them your business card, you know. So I would love doing stuff like that, you know. Yeah. Um, have your badge on. I would have, like, my badge on, you know. And people would look at your badge and what you do, you know. And you see them, like, noticing, paying attention and mm -hmm. conversations. Yeah, that's so important. You know, when I think of a, a champion, I think of a winner. I think mm -hmm. of people that that grind. And when you look at champions and whether it's Olympic champions, football champions, whatever it is, um, it's what separates a winner from others. Mm -hmm. And it's because they never stop. They, to your point, they do something every single day. They keep pushing, pushing themselves to new limits. They work hard to get rid of uh, self-doubt, self-limiting ideas, they don't listen to other people who are negative, right? They 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 seem to run in packs with people that have a strong mindset. Yeah, and that's exactly what uh, you know we we do here as well. Is we we're very selective who we work with because mindset is everything. 
Yeah. If we get one bad apple, one bad mindset that wants to come in, it can be in. On the other hand, if we get really good mindsets of people that are, you know, super positive and hardworking, well, then we've got something good. So I appreciate you sharing that. And I just have one last question for you. What advice would you have to someone who's maybe just starting the business as a realtor, or perhaps they've they've been in it, but maybe they they feel a little lost? What advice would you have to them to help them be successful in 2024 and moving forward? Mm -hmm. So I think as a starter, it's really important who you. Uh, mix yourself with who's around you, you know? So always make sure you're around like-minded people, you know, people that you can learn from, you know? Um, and, you know, just basically be like a sponge, you know? Because at the beginning, that's how you have to be. Just observe, observe here, there, you know? Even if, let's say, sometimes you don't agree with somebody, but it's just a different perspective, you know? Yeah. So I think this is one of the best, because then you get their energy, you observe it, and then you develop your own, you know, um, you just like thinking, okay, what's makes sense for me? What's not, you know, I'm going to adopt this thing, you know, this one is not so much, you know, so it's just, you know, being around like-minded people, um, and that's what's going to give you the energy, the motivation, um, you know, go to networking events, you know, mm -hmm. go to your office, you know, yeah. you keep it like, uh, top agents, you know, um, get somebody with productivity coaching that could maybe, you know, help you with some like daily, um, activities, you know, can help guide you, you know, tell you like, maybe if you are like, feel like you're too lost, have them, you know, just give you a daily, you know, um, kind of deeds to do. That's and, really good. Yeah. Super helpful. And, there. and also, uh, listening to, you know, while driving, listening to podcasts. Yes. Such as this. <laughs> I can't wait for everybody to listen to this because yeah. how wise that is so um such good um encouragement instead of you know turning on the radio and listening to the same old songs or whatever put a podcast on put something mm -hmm. that will nourish our mind yeah. right so that we yeah. can now share with others and help nourish minds champions flock to other champions and right. that's just a fact. Winners flock to winners. Champions flock to champions. And you said it, you nailed it right on the head. If you want to be a champion, if you want to be a winner, you go ask and you go talk to other champions and winners. Mm -hmm. Get their story, their struggle, what they've done. And what you're doing, Julia, you are working hard. You're a grinder in this business. You care about people. You care about your clients. I will highly refer you. And obviously we're here, you know, to help in any way possible, whether it's uh, buyer educations or co-marketing and whatever, whatever help you need, we're always here too. But we're grateful for hardworking realtors like yourself. Likewise, thank you. And me too, I'm always looking for great people from the industry, you know, to collaborate with, to refer my client to, you know, people that like, easy going, you know, that can be responsive, you know, sometimes we have a situation where I have to call you right away, you know, we're in the middle of writing an offer, you know, yeah. can you like help me crunch some numbers? Absolutely. Crunch, 11 o'clock at night, my phone rings sometimes. I answer yeah. it I'm like, hello, how can I help? <laughs> so you see that that's, that's what I'm looking for. And that's, yeah. we never stop working, you know? No, no, we, we even, don't. Even on vacation, you know? No, it's, it's true. It's, you know, I think for me is just a little uh, disclosure here is people know me as the lender that always answers his phone. I always answer my phone and that could be in the form. Let's say I've got three phone calls since we started this podcast and I just simply sent a message. I says, I'm in a podcast. I will call back immediately. Mm -hmm. I say something. Otherwise, okay. I pick up my phone every single time. That alone has set me apart from thousands of lenders. People say, I can never get a hold of my lender. Or he calls you back three days later. I'm like, how do you do that in this market, especially? Yeah. yeah. 
So that's that's not a. So I'm so happy to have you have joined us today, um, Julia Hasanoff from Keller Williams, and you have the mindset of a champion. And I look forward to our next podcast and uh, look forward to having you back with us. Likewise, thank you very much for having me. Um, and you know, if there is anyone that needs also, I speak other languages too. I speak Russian, I speak Hebrew, can communicate in Spanish. So I would love to help people of all, all kinds, you know? That's we love that. <laughs> you will be our go-to for that for sure. <laughs> all right, have a great day. Thank you, you too. That's Thank great. you.